Let's talk about social media, okay? And if the shoe fits, by all means, wear it, okay? What the Bible say, command these things. Exhort, let no one disregard you. That's your heart, right? That's how we see it, okay? That's, that's your heart. Not really, right? But parece pechuga de paloma, right? <laughs> okay. Let me, let me show you Romans... Um, Romans chapter 3, page 941. Look, the world... The world has a false understanding of what it means when we say God knows your heart or God knows my heart. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing how people on the outside can be rotten and yet they somehow make themselves feel better in saying, well, despite what you see on the outside, I have a good heart. Folks, the Bible does not speak that way. The Bible doesn't teach that. If you're rotten on the outside, it's because you're rotten on the inside. And if you, if you are a fruitful tree, it's because you're good on the inside. So the Bible does definitely teach that you judge a book by its cover. Now, look at verse 13 of Romans. It says, their throat is an open grave. Romans chapter 3, verse 13. Their throat is an open grave. I believe that what this verse is talking about, they use their tongues to deceive. Um, if you wanted to see the contents of a grave, what do you do? You open the casket. Or you open the grave and you look inside. If you want to look at a person's heart, okay, you look through the grave. According to this, what's, what's the, the entrance of the grave? Your throat. Your mouth is a window into your heart. What comes out of a person's mouth, okay, comes from the heart every single time. There's no such thing as, you know what, let me just speak to you from my heart. Well, where are you speaking from when you don't speak from the heart? You know? Where do you, where do you, everything that comes out of your, your mouth proceeds from the heart. That's what Jesus taught. Everything, without exception. So, um, I'm going to write this, okay? So, here's a, so it comes out of the mouth, right? And I'm going to write communication. Right? Speech. Right? Yes? No? Yeah. But they told me not to say right anymore, so I'm trying to be conscious of that. Okay. Can you, can you name different forms of communication? Sign language. Sign language. So you can get cursed in sign language? Yeah. <laughs> so when a person curses in sign language, it's coming from their heart? Yeah. Okay, so, so sign language. What are some other forms of communication? Facebook. Facebook. What else? Twitter. Twitter. Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah. Text. Where does all that come from? Facebook. Exactly. Your heart is on display on Facebook. Your heart is on display on Twitter. Your, heart, your character, the kind of per... If you want to know what a person is like, look at their Twitter account. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's, it's a window into your soul, a window into your heart, and it's on display for everyone to see. If you meet someone for the first time, and you find out they have a Facebook, why do you visit their Facebook? To find out something about them. You want to know, you see, employers do this. You apply for a job, it's common practice now. If you apply for a job, when you fill out that application, they're going to they're gonna search your name, they're going to Google your name, and if they find your Facebook account, they're going to judge your character by your Facebook activity. Is that right or wrong? Right. That's right. Because employ, uh, employers judge, and rightly so, that a person's character is on display 
on Facebook. That's who you are. Okay, so if you've got half-naked pictures of yourself on Facebook, that's who you are. If you are foul-mouthed on Facebook, that's who you are. Your heart is on display on Facebook, on Twitter, on text messaging, on Snapchat. I was trying to stir up Ray with jealousy, Richard. <laughs> Look at me and Chris, we're hanging out. And I don't understand this mentality that people have because I've heard it before. Well, it's just on Twitter. That's not really who I am. Also, you're faking it. So what does that say about? If you're saying the person I am on Twitter is not the person I am on real life, then you're saying you're a fake. That's what you're saying. You see, it's a lose-lose situation. Right? Well, I know I post all that stuff on, 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 on Facebook, but I, I mean, I really don't mean it, so you're lying. Look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned with people who call themselves Christians who attend this church specifically, okay, and act very, you, look, we have no business, okay, and if you feel like I'm talking to you, it's because I probably am, right? <laughs> If the shoe fits, wear it, okay? Okay, right now, it's command these things. Here's my concern. You say you're a Christian, okay? You say you're a Christian, and your Twitter activity doesn't reflect that it dishonors God, it dishonors the Lord. It's a reproach. Either abandon your profession of faith or clean it up. Because what's my concern? That you make this church look bad? No, no, no. It does make this church look bad. Oh, and she goes to that church over there across from Los Caesars? Right? Or he goes to that? No. It's a reproach on the name of the Lord. That's the first concern. And you have two... You, there's, you can look, you, you can get mad, you can respond in several different ways. Here's one way you can respond. Block me. Right? I'm not even on Facebook right now. But unfollow, block, whatever. So he'll get off my case finally. I have to put up with him and always, you know, oh, just hovering. I just, I always feel like he's watching me. What am I, God? <laughs> I'm not omnipresent. So, so if you block me and you continue that activity, it tells me and others that you fear Christian love more than you fear God. That, that's what it ultimately says. And that's happened before in the past. And I just block him because he's always telling me something. And, you know, I just want to be able to be myself. <laughs> you want to be half naked, potty mouthed, dishonoring Jesus. Because I'm not afraid of the Holy Spirit. I'm not afraid of Jesus telling me anything. He's all cool with it, you know. It's Chris that I fear. I just don't want him to see. Where are your priorities? <laughs> Folks, this is about... Me exhorting you and, and telling you to walk in a way that honors the Lord. I cannot make you do any of these things. All I can do is point them out. L let me show you. No one is immune. Have I acted stupid on Facebook? I have. Has peop have people called me out on it? They have. That it's staying? Yeah. That I get mad? Yeah, my pride was hurt. Okay? So you suck it up and then you just don't do it again or at least try not to. And I block them anyways, but uh, <laughs> just kidding and do that. <laughs> let, me, let me show you something from the book of Galatians and then, and then we'll... Um, look, let me, let me... Look, can pastors act in a way that is inconsistent or in a way that contradicts what they believe? Can pastors do that? Yeah. Yes, they, they do. They do. They do that. What I'm telling you is not I'm the standard. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the Bible is the standard. And if anything, I ought to be an example to you. Okay. I want to show you how Peter himself was not immune 
from being called out. Verse 11, what was Peter doing? He was, he was, he was being racist. That's what he was doing. Uh, Galatians chapter 2. You see, the Jews had a very high view of themselves. They saw themselves as the people of God, and, and rightly so. But it, it led them to think of themselves as because of their ethnicity, because they were related to Abraham, it, it, it caused them to at times um, see themselves as better. Um, and it was really ingrained into them. So it's something that didn't go away overnight. There was also peer pressure. Folks, this is the leader of the apostles. Now, if you're Catholic, this was the first pope. Now, I don't believe that, but just to give you an idea of who we're talking about, we're talking about the man whom Jesus says, and upon this rock I will build my church. Verse 11, you ready? Galatians chapter 2. So, well, I feel terrible because I'm a Christian and, you know, I'm being called out. And look, I'm telling you that everyone has made mistakes. Okay? Everyone has made... And I'm, I'm giving you an example of a church leader. And this wasn't even... Oh, this is BC. No, this is when he's a church leader. In verse 11, he says, But when Cephas, meaning Peter, came to Antioch, I opposed him to his Facebook. I mean, face. <laughs> I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. What was he doing? Look at verse 12. For before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. And the rest of the Jews, because he set himself as an ex Look, Peter was an example. You're an example. The question is, are you a good example or are you a bad example? But the question is never, are you an example or not? No, no, you're an example. The issue is, are you a good example or are you a bad example? And in this case, Peter's being a bad example. In verse 13 it says, And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their what? Was not in step with the truth of the gospel. I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile, not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? In other words, why are you acting the hypocrite? He said, but when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel. What that means is that Peter, of course, believes the gospel, but his conduct was contradicting the very thing he says he believed. Peter was preaching, and if you look at Acts, he's the one that preached. He's the one that preached. God has accepted the Gentiles, non-Jews. I was there at Cornelius' house. I mean, while I was preaching to him, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just like he did on us at the beginning. And who was I to oppose God? God included the Gentiles, and then he goes and does this. What? Inconsistent. So here is the Apostle Peter behaving in a way that was hypocritical and he was behaving in a way that contradicted the gospel and another apostle calls him out on it and says, no, 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 no. You see what you're doing right there? That's not very Christian of you to put it in modern like people say that, well, that's not very Christian, Jeanette. I don't know. It, it doesn't take long for you to be a believer when you first become a believer. People would immediately start saying that. Well, that's not very Christian. <sighs> it grieves me. Really, it, it grieves me. Um, people come to this church and it's no secret. They're not making it a secret. They, people come to this church and say, Chris, I came here because I want to learn. I haven't really made a decision. Uh, I haven't really made a decision about whether I want to follow the Lord. Or what, I don't even know what, Christ, what it means to live like a believer. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. All kinds of things. We understand that. And you're welcome here. You, you know, I'm not going to treat you like I'm going to treat someone who says they're a believer and they've been baptized. 
I have a responsibility towards them that I don't have towards people that are not yet in the flock, so to speak. And here's a confession. Here's a confession. You ready for it on my end? Amen. It's so easy to be brave on Facebook. Yeah. It's harder to be brave when you're face to face with somebody. Right? And in the past, we've had issues in our church and I've acted cowardly. I didn't say anything. Well, maybe it'll fix itself. Cobarde. I've been a coward. And I don't want to be a coward anymore. You know, I want to address issues. Now, that doesn't mean that I'll always be addressing issues. I, I just, I want to be able to preach. And I want people to just hear what is preached and say, I believe that, and then move along in our growth in Christ-likeness. But when I teach something week after week after week, and you haven't been a Christian six weeks, not a year, but you've been a Christian for years, at some point, somebody needs to tell you, grow up. Grow up, okay? You weren't born yesterday, you weren't born again yesterday. Now, listen, let me, <laughs> go to uh, Hebrews chapter 6. Um, I think it's 5. I think it's 5. Yes, it's, it's 5 and verse 11. And then we'll close with this because it's, it's, way, it's past 8 o'clock. Uh, page 1003. I really hope... I really hope that you don't leave here tonight. And then in some occasions say, oh, I was going to tweet or post this on Facebook, but I better not because Chris is going to get mad. If you do that, you totally missed the point. <laughs> you totally missed the point. Right, Sylvia? Okay. Somebody's watching you. <laughs> <laughs> the author of Hebrews is trying to teach the church, the recipients of this letter, but you can kind of tell his frustration because he perceives them to be dull of hearing. Cabezones is what that means. Verse 11, about this we have much to say and it is hard to explain. Why is it hard to explain according to the rest of the verse? Uh, chapter 5 verse 11. He says, about this, we have much to say, and it's hard to explain. Why is it hard to explain according to the rest of the verse? Since you have become dull of hearing. I wish I could explain it to you, but you have proven cabezón. That's what it means. I wish that I could explain more, but you have proven stubborn. Or you have proven to just not get it. Verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. The oracles of God just simply means the word of God or God's revelation. You need milk, not solid food. Do you know why Delilah cannot eat solid food right now? Because she's a baby. She doesn't have the teeth. She's not mature enough. So right now, she needs milk. And what, what the author of Hebrews is saying is that some people need spiritual milk. Why? Because they're spiritual babies, spiritually immature, and we cannot go on teaching harder or more difficult things because they're babies. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant what? Practice. Practice. To distinguish good from evil. What's our diet like? Milk? Yeah, I mean, but it's more than just reading the Bible. It's actually putting it into practice. It's, it's putting it into practice. Um, 
Well, uh, sometimes when you're trying to be, <laughs> this is me, like very inconsistent. I go to my room and I'm reading my Bible. And the Bible tells me to be self-controlled. Watch my temper. Listen, watch. This is how, in, this is how, this is how inconsistent we can be. So I'm reading the Bible. And I hear noises in the background. And doors slamming and the kids fighting. And, and I rush out of the room furious. <laughs> I'm trying to be spiritual right now. And you guys are making all this noise. And can I even study? Just sh everyone shut up and psh, slam the door, go back. Where were we, Lord? <laughs> you see how stupid that is? Yeah. Like, the ve I just finished reading how I'm supposed to be, you know, gracious and self control and gentle. And then I walk out and do the complete opposite. And, the, and then, and you know, you know what's worse? That I don't actually realize it when I'm doing it. It's only when I look back and I'm like, what I did yesterday, wow, that was dumb. But I don't see it. Like the moment that I'm doing it, I don't, I don't see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Holy Spirit. <laughs> we're all in this together. We're, we're all in this together. And we're here to help each other. And uh, everything that I've said tonight springs from nothing else. Nothing else except this. I have no ill will towards you. I have no malice towards you. Uh, I have no aim to make you feel bad just for making you feel bad. Um, I love the Lord. And uh, you love the Lord. And my motives is... For the love of God. Let's do everything within our power or the power that God gives us not to be a reproach to the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Let's not engage in the very sins that put him on the cross. That's my motivation. My, my command is love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul. Love the Lord with your Facebook. Love the Lord with your Twitter. Love the Lord with your Instagram, with your Snapchat, <laughs> with whatever it is. Anywhere where, you're, where, where you are on, on public display. Love the Lord with it. And this is, it's, it's not what, let me, this is not what this means. Okay, you don't go home and say, ah, now I can't post anything because Chris, all he wants to see is scriptures now. No, that's not what I'm talking about. It's, it's great to take pictures of um, family, huh? Food. I mean, you can take pictures of food and say, man, praise God for the, I mean, you don't have to, I'm not saying you have to mention God every single time. I mean, you can take pictures of yourself if you want, like twice a year, you know? <laughs> I mean, you can take selfies like once every six months. No, I'm just kidding. That, that's your business. All I'm saying is that, think of it this way, okay? If someone comes to uh, my, this is the way I think, if someone comes to my Facebook page and they look at it, am I making the Lord look bad? Yeah. Am I making the church look bad? Am I, that, that's how I think. There have been times when um, Letty has wanting, wanted to post things. There's nothing bad about her post, what she's, and I look at it and I say, Letty, what you're saying is absolutely correct. There's nothing wrong with it. But, but, but somebody who reads it might interpret it wrongly and then it's going to cause unnecessary drama. And then that person will get mad at you and then it might close the door uh, to maybe witness to them in the future, share Christ with them. Um, have I alienated people? Yeah. Um, have I unnecessary at times alienated people? Yeah. I, I can't always tell how people are going to respond. I mean, they, there used to be this one person that I would post something on Facebook and I would get a text message. I know you're talking about me. If you have something to say to me, just say it. <laughs> really? I would get the, and I mean, it, talk about drama. 
And they would get, and they wouldn't come to church because they're all ticked off. And I love the hide button. You know, the, you you know, you can post on Facebook and and hide certain people. So they don't they don't see it. And Cardi's like, yeah, but I don't have Facebook because that's like so yesterday, right? <laughs> or or Nina, who's it that doesn't have Facebook anymore? Nina, okay, she's all cool now. But anyways, if you, so what I'm saying is that I'm not just saying. Even the innocent stuff, you, you have to be careful because it might be perceived wrongly. And, and <laughs> confess, Leti. Leti say, oh, sometimes she's mad. Oh, I want to post this because I know it'll make someone so mad. You know, I just want to tell her off. <laughs> Leti, chill out, Leti. We, listen, we have the same struggles as you young people, okay? Just the grown-up version of it. Just the grown-up. Uh, uh, sometimes I've gotten frustrated and upset. I just <laughs> send, ah, delete, right? Just, anyways, I think we're done. That, that, we could be here all night, but um, all I can tell you is that if you love Jesus, I'm appealing to your love for him to be a good witness for him. To not be a reproach on the Lord, on this church, okay? If you're a man, for the love of God, don't check in at the palace on Saturday night <laughs> and then check in at Church of Grace on Sunday morning, okay? And no, you don't say, well, I'll go, but I just won't check in. No, don't go at all. Like, I'm, I mean, like, don't check in in real life. <laughs> either or don't don't check in at Tropical on you know Tuesday night and then Wednesday night you check in at yeah but you see that's the thing I mean if you're not a believer okay and you're still in between you know that's between you and God other people might think that mira el pastor no les dice nada maybe Chris is with them right at Tropical Maybe let these play in there. That's why they're over there. Uh, Leti and I went to the uh, Tejano Awards um, a few months ago because they asked Leti to sing one of her Christian songs. And we had some conflicted feelings about that. Um, but we, after thinking about it for a while, we thought, you know what, it would be a good, it would be a good opportunity uh, to go to San Antonio uh, and to be part of the Tejano Music Awards because Leti's like, singing a Christian song and then she's presenting an album. But we knew that there are certain kinds of Christians out there that think that, think that we would be sinning by being there. And there's other Christians who would be applauding us. Man, that's great. So it was like, do we share any kind of activity on Facebook or not? And we just, I drew the conclusion that you, you cannot please everybody. I drew the conclusion that, look, let the you and I know that we're here out of good motives and good intentions. Um, and this is an issue that we cannot hide. People are going to know that we were here because it's part of the Tejano Awards website and, you know, whatever. Um, and so, but it doesn't mean you have to be rubbing it in people's faces. Checked in here and checked in here and, you know, just constant, you know. So people did post, but it was Jessica that was doing it and Priscilla and, and, and Delma kept posting and... and uh, you know, posting with Bobby Polito and no, I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he wasn't even there. I'm just making that up. But, but you see, not every decision is an easy one. And, and yes, sure enough, as a result of that, there are people who will never come to this church because they think that Letty and I are worldly, 